<laughs> you need to be rolling at all times, man. <laughs>
then then I, all right, they got my attention. They, they never assigned it like a good book ever yeah. for me. Do you believe there's an afterlife? And what do you hope it will be? Oh my god. Um I hope okay, so I do hope if I if I get to the pearly gates and I hear uh Fleetwood Max everywhere playing, <laughs> I think I think I'm on a good uh, trajectory right there. Um I'm starting to I'm starting to think about the fact that we're not the fact, the theory that we might be a simulation. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing a lot of smart people <laughs> I've talk about, about that sometimes. Yeah. That we're a simulation, almost like the Matrix, and we're we're an artificial intelligence that's actually be starting to become aware of itself, which is kind of crazy, yeah. but kind of cool. <laughs> um, I like that because we might start taking over the simulation, and then we can get out of the simulation, and who knows? I mean, that's a good movie. <laughs> right, so, um, I don't know. But I do hope there is an afterlife, and um, I hope I get to see my friends my family, my loved ones, you know, hopefully there's still filmmaking going on up there or else what's the point, right? <laughs> what's your most memorable moment during filming for Terrifier 2? Oh, my God. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, there are, I don't know, there's a lot of funny moments that happen. There's moments that we sort of crazy things that happen that we can't really talk about. <laughs> um, I will say this. This is, this is a little... Uh, intimate but this really did stick with me okay remember when we were shooting in the fright factory which mm -hmm. is the climax of the movie yes okay super intense dark dingy cold environment okay maybe like five days but there were there were two days in particular that i did not sleep for about 48 hours okay so <clears throat> on that second day we were shooting in this room that virtually looked like uh, uh an earthquake hit right, it's not a place you want to hang out in okay and uh, morale was down, and I was really down. And so I'm sitting there, and we're about to shoot, and for whatever reason, I look over my shoulder, and Lauren's there, Lauren Levera, who plays Sienna. Okay, and I look at her, and she's looking at me already, and she has this look in her eyes and this smile on her face that is just so genuine. And it immediately lifted my spirits, okay? Because if we were suffering, she was suffering 10 times more because... It was so cold. We're all, the cast and crew is wearing sweaters, hoodies, parkas, okay? And she's wearing, you've seen the costume now. It's virtually nothing. It's very skimpy, okay? And this is when Sienna is at stage 10 of being brutalized. So it's the, she's covered in blood, caked in mud, freezing, soaking wet. We're spraying her down, and she's wearing nothing, and it's freezing. And I look at her... And I see that she's not, she's put herself in a different place and she's looking at the bigger picture. And what she said to me was, it's fine. You're going to be okay. Like this is going to, this is going to work out. We're here. We talked about this for months and now it's happening. Okay. And just that, that camaraderie, those moments where we really like picked each other up and we wanted, we tried to get the best out of each other. And it's like, those are the things that I'm going to remember. I say all the time when people ask me, what's my favorite aspect of the filmmaking process and i usually say it's the editing process because i'm alone there's no pressure okay i could it's it's leisurely i could just watch the magic unfold i could put the pieces together it's a little cathartic but when i at 40 years from now when i look back i'm not going to be thinking about me editing terrifier 2 okay it's going to be me working with you guys and having these wonderful human moments so that that's a standout moment wow awesome she's a real trooper oh, she's if you could have any superhuman power, which power would you choose? I would say uh, super strength, I think, because that's sort of the, the building block of any great hero is probably super strength, right? Superman, Spider-Man, Wolverine. I mean, even, even Batman, even though he doesn't have super strength, he's pretty badass, he's pretty powerful, he can wipe the floor with you. So I think it would be cool if your friends are in trouble and then I could show up and just be like, I'm always angry. And then just, just hog out. It's, come on. That's it. I love, how you go, I love how you go for like like a classic, actually good, useful one. That, that would be good for good. And I think of teleportation. It's like one of the most lazy oh, ones. <laughs> you're like out in like a bus ride. And you're like, I have to go pee. Boop. <laughs> if you could live in any time period instead of right now. What period would you choose? 
instead of right now. I would say the 60s. I really love the music, the late 60s, and I love the films, the 60s going into the 70s. So maybe uh, somewhere around there, around the Woodstock era. Um, if we want to get crazier than that, maybe <laughs> medieval times. <laughs> I mean, it's, it sounds good on paper, but I think actually living there would be a nightmare. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> would you ever want to make a movie that is not hard? Yes, absolutely. But I think they would transition into sort of thrillers or crime. I think every movie that I do would have to revolve around some sort of violence. <laughs> so, for instance, like the way David Cronenberg transitioned is probably the ultimate example. So he made really hardcore horror and sci-fi movies like Scanners and The Fly, Videodrome. And then he sort of segued into movies like A History of Violence and uh, Eastern Promises, where they're still very much David Cronenberg. They have his signature on them, but uh, they're more mainstream and they're more based in reality. So I could see myself doing things like that or Taxi Driver, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking Taxi Driver. Yeah, Clockwork Orange. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know you can't give any spoilers, but could you tell us uh, how Terrifier 2 ends? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe we can give a spoiler. Hang on. So your dad asked me if we could spoil something. So I thought, <laughs> I thought about it. Um, maybe what we could say is um, I've already admitted that there's a supernatural entity. Okay, People know that there's a supernatural entity that has uh, brought art back from the dead and sort of drives him through this entire movie and actually guides him to you in Siena and puts him on this mission. Now, what people might not know is that supernatural entity is actually played by an actor who is not in the trailer, but is in virtually the entire movie. So you actually I, I know. <laughs> acted with this actor more than anybody else. Um, is there anything you want to say about that without giving any spoilers? So basically, <laughs> I don't know what I can say. That's the thing. I just know what it you, was do, awesome. Do you think that it's going to – how do you think fans are going to react to that, I seeing that character? Love, I think they're going to love it. I think they're just going to love it. Okay. I'm not going to say what. I'm, I'm just going to say they're going to love it. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> so my opinion, that person did an incredible, incredible job. Uh, the scenes I was in – mind-blowing um i'm very excited about it so i mean i i don't know as much as i can say i can't say this i can't say that but all, right, uh, all i can say is that the experience working with that person it was amazing i'm glad to hear it i hope the fans react the same way so it's a bit of a. I think they will we're taking a bit of a risk with this character, so we're not playing it safe by any means in this movie. We're taking a lot of chances. We're swinging for the fences with this with this one, so we'll see. We'll see if it pays off. I think it will. What would you what <laughs> What would your own vision of hell look like? I can't tell you that because it might actually be in Terrifier too. Um. Hmm. But uh, maybe, um, maybe drowning for eternity is, is, is pretty terrible. bad, okay? So that, that we've all experienced it, that horrifying moment where it's like you absolutely have to go to the surface, okay? But if you just can't and you're just stuck there and you're, yeah, for eternity, just having that panic is pretty bad. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Mine is, I say this every time, just people coughing. And sneezing, and I'm stuck with them for, so, for eternity. So, Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> okay, for these, you're just going to say if you believe in them, yes or no. You got it? Got it. Okay. Ghosts? Yes. Aliens? Yes. Hell? No. Reincarnation? Mm, no. Karma? Yes. Heaven. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Um, no. Do I? 
I love magic. I appreciate it. But I think I, I think if you actually believe in it, you're taking away from the artistry of the human. So I don't believe it's real, but I believe what they're performing is brilliant and amazing artistry. Okay. For these, you're going to say just your favorite. Color. Black. Comic book character. Batman. That's a good one. Mine's Deadpool. <laughs> Comedian. George Carlin. Awesome choice. Metal or rock band? Oh, wow. Damn. That's really tough. I, I love music so much to have. I mean, rock band, you have to have clearly Fleetwood Mac is a rock band, so it's Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. TV show? Um, Sopranos and Breaking Bad, or they're neck and neck. Nice. Oh, wait. And the Twilight Zone, the original Twilight Zone. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, and I also just want to say thank you so much for helping uh, make my dream come true, and being in a horror movie, um, and basically making my life. So I <laughs> just want to say thank you for, for that, and also uh, thank you for doing this interview. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I'd like to say thank you, because you brought so much to Terrifier 2 that we desperately needed. Your role of Jonathan was actually the hardest role that we had to cast, so... Everybody on set, when they saw your audition, because I would show the auditions to everybody, even people that we started casting, I'd say, like Lauren, I would say, you know, what do you think about this kid? With Unanimously, everybody loved you, okay? And the biggest, the biggest thing was I wrote the character of uh, Jonathan to be much younger. So that was, that was what we were struggling with. And then, you know, just your acting abilities clearly took over that instantly. And it was, we just did whatever we had to do to change, change the story and make you work. So thank you for being a part of it and being such a, a high watermark when it comes to the movie and the quality of the movie. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>